I've been using the base 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip for a full year now and mostly for video editing. Exported more than a thousand videos for my clients and two of my YouTube channels, took it to several trips and now I have a ton of experience with it and I'm ready to tell you guys if it's a dream and the best value editing laptop or should you wait for the new M3 chips with 3 nanometer technology. Let's go! So let's start off with the main thing of this video, the video editing performance, and it has been great. I use Sony a7S III and I shoot only in 4K and XAVC-S codec, which is H.264 long GOP 10-bit 422 codec, and it's pretty tough for your computer. Before that, I used iMac 5K late 2015 in almost maximum configuration and it couldn't properly work with even 4K25 footage from Sony a7S III. And I'm not even saying about 4K50 or 4K120, I had to make proxies or to shoot in ProRes with my Ninja 5 recorder, but with the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16-inch I completely forgot about lagging, stuttering, even with 4K 120 footage and large projects with lots of effects, titles, transitions and color grading. The render times and stabilization could be a bit better and faster occasionally, but still it is miles ahead and faster than any of my previous computers. But there is one plugin that made me remember the old days of waiting and slower editing experience, the Hanser plugin. The Hanser is hands down the best film emulation plugin, but it's pretty power hungry. A full review of this plugin you can find down in the description below. I love its tools and what it does, but with the 16 inch M1 Pro base model, it's not silky smooth. It has enough power to make some adjustments on a still image and it's pretty comfortable to work with, but to play back the footage, you'll need to pre render this section, and the rendering times are 3 to 4 times slower than with the regular color grading effects applied to 4K 10 bit footage. So, for working more fluidly with the Hanser plugin, I would suggest getting an M1 Max computer or waiting for the M3 Pro computers. I mean, it's doable and okay with my laptop, but I would appreciate a bit faster performance in this case. Render times and exports. Most of the time it exports any codec and resolution faster than the actual video length is. For example, a complex 10-minute 4K project with multiple layers of 4K files, color grading, lots, effects, titles, transitions usually exports in about 5 to 8 minutes. If you work with ProRes footage and export to ProRes as well, you'll see better results. But if you apply the Hanser plugin, as I said before, you'll have to render 2 or maybe 3 times longer than the length of the video itself. For example, a 2-minute 4K project will be exported in about 5 to 6 minutes. I have a full video about working and exporting different codecs and resolutions on this computer, so I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Of course, under a heavy load, this computer produces heat, as any other computer basically, so let's talk about heat and fan noise. Most of the time this laptop is completely silent and cool, if you do simple tasks of course, but when editing a long 4K video it can get pretty warm, so it's a bit uncomfortable to hold on your laps. And I only heard the fans about 20 times throughout the entire year when I was rendering and exporting longer than 15 minutes 4K files or exporting a video graded with the Hanser plugin again. But right after the export it stops spinning the fans and gets quiet again in a few minutes. All in all, I'd say I like how the M1 Pro 16-inch performs in terms of heat and fans, but there is always a room for improvement in this aspect, and with the more efficient 3 nanometer chips that are gonna be coming soon, we'll get even more cold and power-efficient machines with better battery life. Speaking of battery life, technically the 16-inch with M1 Pro chip has the best battery life among all the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros, because it has a big battery capacity and less hungry chip. The real-world battery life is decent. While editing and exporting heavy videos like 4K with LUTs and titles and all that, like I usually do for my YouTube channels and my clients, the battery life is about 4 hours under a very heavy load. But when you do simple tasks like browsing the web, watching movies, working with documents and so on, you can easily get more than 8 hours or maybe even closer to 10 hours of battery life. After a year of heavy usage, my M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16-inch has 211 cycles and 97% battery capacity. Fast charging with MagSafe up to 50% in half an hour is also really helping me out, and I use MagSafe 95% of the time. 
16 gigs of unified memory coupled with really fast internal SSD works perfectly fine even with tough projects. I had only one system message, not enough memory, on a huge 2 hour long 4K project and Safari and Chrome browsers open simultaneously. Most of the time the swap memory works great and you don't even notice that you ran out of RAM. But to be honest, the 32 gigs of unified memory will be a sweet spot for almost any kind of video editing, in my opinion. Base 16-inch MacBook Pro comes with 512 gigs of storage, and since I only use the external SSDs like Samsung T7 and T5 for video editing, I usually have about 300 gigs of free internal storage. And I think even with one terabyte of internal SSD, you won't be able to edit big projects off of the internal SSD itself on a regular basis. So I'm okay with 512 gigs but if you can find a good deal on one or two terabyte options just get it there is never too much disk space a few words about size and weight it's okay especially considering the real estate that you get with the 16 inch model and the quality of the speakers throughout the year this laptop visited 10 countries and more than 30 cities together with me and it's been on planes trains buses taxis hotel rooms and more and i would say if i had a macbook air with me that would be much easier to travel with and at times the 16 inch model is too bulky and heavy to comfortably work on the go but i wasn't suffering or swearing it would be just a bit more comfortable with a lighter and more compact machine, but it's definitely doable traveling with a 16 inch and getting all of the advantages of it in exchange for some weight and bigger footprint. Ports. Three Thunderbolt ports are almost perfect for my workflow, but usually I connect two SSDs to add it off of and a third SSD from my Atomos Ninja 5 with ProRes footage, so I end up occupying all three Thunderbolt ports, so a fourth one would be much appreciated. HDMI and SD card slots are also working flawlessly and I love having the card reader built in and completely forgot about dongles. Oh yeah, and I've been using only the built-in trackpad and keyboard for video editing. No complaints at all, the trackpad is just magnificent. The screen, 16 inch is big enough for video editing and I've used only the built-in screen throughout the entire year without a need to hook up an external monitor. I've developed a hotkey to quickly switch between browsing the footage and color grading mode. If you're interested in it, I'll leave a link to my little tutorial video about it down below. And just use a dark wallpaper to completely forget about the notch, please guys, stop complaining about it. The blooming effect is visible in very dark scenes and from time to time it can be distracting, but on the other hand, the black levels are great. The max brightness of 500 nits is plenty for my use cases and the HDR brightness of 1000 nits is really outstanding. And by the way, you can unlock it in a regular mode by using the app called Vivid. But while video editing, I do recommend setting your brightness not to the maximum setting because you may experience a slight color shift and also your whites may seem a bit overexposed while they are not. So for more precise work, use your MacBook at 50 to 75% brightness. Other than that, this screen is amazing and don't forget about ProMotion technology, 120Hz really make everything look snappier. Mic and webcam. Now you're hearing the voiceover recorded with an internal microphone of MacBook Pro 16 inch, without any post processing and in not acoustically treated room. So, in my opinion, it sounds just awesome. The webcam quality is just okay, nothing mind blowing, but good enough for Zoom calls, and some of my clients even told me that they really like the image quality while calls. But I don't care about the webcam too much, especially with macOS Ventura and the inability to use your iPhone's camera as a webcam. Audio. The speakers on the 16-inch MacBook Pros are simply incredible. I was literally blown away by the quality and deep bass of it. I could even edit with those speakers only and get decent results, but I don't recommend doing so for professional work. For music, movies, watching YouTube videos and so on, these are just perfect. Even after a year, I'm still impressed every time I hear those. Value. Now on B&H you can find it for $2200 and for the refurbished version it's about $1800 or maybe for a second-hand version. And for less than $2200 this machine is just outstanding and has crazy good value for money. 
and I would 100% recommend purchasing it, because it handled everything I threw at it and it'll last for years to come. I would say 5 to 7 years easily. It feels like after a year it became a bit slower, but maybe it's because I got used to it and the wow effect from switching to M1 Pro from the Intel MacBook Pro 13 and iMac 5K is not that strong anymore. And remember guys, compared to Intel machines, this M1 Pro is just a monster. So should you wait for the M3 chips based on 3 nanometer technology in March 2023 or just get this one with a discount? There is a ton of rumors that Apple will be the biggest customer of TSMC company in terms of 3 nanometer chips. And of course at some point in 2023 I hope we'll see M3 Pro and M3 Max chips with much higher power efficiency, less heat produced and longer battery life alongside slightly higher benchmark numbers in terms of CPU and GPU. But I don't think that the performance boost will be more than 20-30% compared to M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. Cooler and a bit more powerful laptop with longer battery life will be highly appreciated, but there are a lot of speculations that Apple will raise the prices for the new models because of the supply chain issues, raising prices all over the world and inflation and overall more expensive 3 nanometer process. So in my opinion, if you're able to find a good deal on the base 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro now, you won't be disappointed. But if you're okay with your current editing machine, you'll be able to keep working on it for one more year for instance and you're ready to pay more than $2,500 for the new M3 Pro 16 inch model, perhaps it will be $2,800 I think, just wait for it. If you found this video helpful feel free to smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. If you have any questions left you're welcome to ask them down in the comment section below. See you in the next video guys, take care, bye.